review of the quality of Australian solar patents. Griffith Hack, which is Australia's lar largest IP firm, identified Igor as the second most cited Australian inventor. At the ANU, never At the ANU, Igor was instrumental in establishing large collaborative projects with international universities and commercial partners in China and India. And more recently, he's focused on the establishment of Master of Energy Change course at ANU's Energy Change Institute, which is where he works. Igor holds a PhD, that's the doctor, a PhD in technical sciences from Moscow University of Ecological Engineering, an MBA from the University of Canberra, no, in his opposition, and uh, Master of Intellectual Property from the University of Technology in Sydney. So please, if you would today introduce our scientific expert, Dr. Igor Skagel. Thank you very much for introducing me, and thank you for everyone to come here. It's a good day, and uh, they put, this is a good day for solar energy and for renewable energy. So we have a very broad topic today, and uh, actually you know where to start. Usually university teachers, they cannot talk now without PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> they have PowerPoint, and the PowerPoint manages you, not you manage PowerPoint. It tells you time, you want to talk, right, you just follow that and now it's human. So when I was told that there were no PowerPoint, I would have an entire class. Don't be very hard. So why renewables? Renewable energy as a topic. Talk, talk is a major topic of today. We have three major reasons for talking about renewables. Reason number one is global warming. Reason number two, but it's not as one of the reasons, but not necessarily major. Reason number two is energy security. So renewables are more energy and eventually cheaper and more affordable energy. I'll talk about that as well. And reason number three is renewable energy is essential to deal with energy poverty. It's not a reason, it's not a reason to anyone in Canberra, but still remains a very important reason worldwide. Uh, to understand the role of renewables, we need to see to talk about our general energy needs. When you're talking about electricity, you to switch. Uh, light in the house or where you turn our fridge. You don't know where those electrons are coming from. Most of the people now probably forget that how it's actually energy produced, where it's coming from. We have not very many energy sources or ways of converting energy to electricity available by electricity, because electricity is still major and most useful for the energy that we most want for it. So first source is most developed is for fossil fuels. That's in the use oil, gas, and coal. But also in other so, is something wrong? Uh, right, should we just get to look at it? Okay, yeah, okay, okay. okay. I get uh, number two is coming from nuclear energy. So we we have different political views and technology views, but we should not necessarily apply. Uh, and upfront exclude any form of energy from market situation. Then we have uh, uh, other forms of energy which are difficult to classify. It's the tidal and geothermal. Tidal is related to tides, and geothermal is related to heat stored within the earth, and they are not solar and not fossil fuel. Right? Gravitational form of energy. And then we have huge enormous capability offered by solar energy. It's, you can classify solar energy sources as direct and indirect. If we talk about wind, hydro, ocean, biomass, it's all solar energy sources. Because wind actually blowing because we have temperature difference between point A and B, and temperature difference for pressure difference and wind. And also, most interesting for direct energy sources. That's not really solar heat, probably one of the most ancient form of use of solar energy. Photovoltaic energy. Photovoltaic energy sources, thermal electric, and thermochemical. So what is this is the right distance? Maybe like that? Yeah. Uh, like that, yes? 
That would be better. Okay. It shows the interest of people in the country. All right, okay. Okay, I'll talk like that. <laughs> so, my particular field of research is photovoltaic energy, but because I represent Energy Change Institute of ANU, I must be energy neutral. That's a policy of our institute. Uh, it's quite difficult to be energy neutral. If you talk to various scientists, you ask them what's the best form of energy. If I work in solar, I'll say, of course, solar. And if you ask me what kind of solar, because I work in photovoltaic, I'll tell you, of course, photovoltaic. And only this type of photovoltaic that I'm particularly developing now, my project, current project. Uh, while I believe that's true, in particular to my particular field of energy, but everyone has a right to believe that that is very So we should probably adopt unbiased view and try to consider all energy sources without any political or personal bias. Still, uh, solar and wind provide the best opportunity for our humanity in the future as renewable energy sources. Uh, total sales of wind energy the community total by 2013 is about 320 gigawatts. It's an enormous number. And only just 3 gigawatts were added to this number in 2013. Uh, solar energy and renewable energy is especially important because it provides long-term security in energy supply. First of all, solar and wind will provide unlimited supply for billions of years. For billions of years is a start of blue. Then, combined together, solar and wind are larger than all other energy forms available to us. It's absolutely unlimited. And also what's very important, solar and wind have minimal security issues. Because if we talk about any other power sources, we always talk about energy. Uh, terror, terrorist threat, energy concern, uh, military concern, distributed solar and wind uh, energy sources will remove us from all these geopolitical concerns. Because solar and wind, they have no borders. And of course, minimal environmental impact, no greenhouse gases, mining down hundredfold compared to fossil fuels and nuclear. And impossible, people, some people say it is a problem. No, it is actually impossible to run out of raw materials. If you look at standard solar cell, what's there? A bit of silicon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, frame, aluminium, a bit of iron. So we have plenty of them. It's not difficult. So we are not limited. Uh, when I talk about minimal security issue, we can now, I'll come to Canberra, uh, probably the uh, second part of my talk. We, we are facing now one of the major crises, geopolitical crises in Europe, in Ukraine. And we can see that energy and energy availability is one of the major components of this crisis. So Ukraine and Europe are concerned that they will be cut, Russian gas supply, and that's one of the major concerns. So, while it is this issue of energy security fuels this current crisis, uh, it actually can be used in smart policies, policy to, uh, to get to move away from the crisis. Ukraine and south of Ukraine in particular, I'm from Ukraine, so I'm very much concerned about this crisis. Ukraine has plenty of solar uh, available solar energy, especially south of Ukraine. And one would think, would it be much better for Euro, for EU, instead of uh, spending money on sanctions and developing this difficult policy mechanism, let's throw money into development of solar energy sources in Ukraine on the conditions that Western and Eastern Ukrainians should work together on development of these sources. Right? That's very, very good opportunities that working together for a common goal, there will be no reason for them to fight each other. So what's about worldwide solar? Silicon PV still dominates. We have about 90% of all photovoltaic coming from standard silicon technology. And if any of you have solar power on your roof, most likely it's silicon solar. Uh, we came through several 
industry shakeouts and now PV industry and John probably will talk more about that emer is emerging from research. If you go to index, there's a special index that shows value and movement of photovoltaic companies on stock market. You can see the index uh, increased from 60 in June 2013 to 200 now. They actually observe four-fold reduction in price of solar photovoltaic just during the last five years. And manufacturing shifts to Asia. Whether it's good or bad, I don't know. It's not necessarily too bad because uh, Chinese manufacturers provide us with available photovoltaic panels, and but we still uh, European equipment market dominates. Considering the shift to Asia, major shift of manufacture, I don't think there is anything specific in photovoltaic or any other new energy. It's just a common reflection of movement of global movement, movements in global economies. And if we consider it a part of global economy solution, not specifically photovoltaic. So, Australian photovoltaic market. We observe fairly falling prices, which now you can get probably, you can get photovoltaic panels on your roof for less than $2,000 per kilowatt, maybe more, much less. We have in excess of uh, 1 million uh, domestic PV rooftops. Uh, retail domestic business TV uh, grid parity is achieved probably perhaps everywhere in Australia. And what does it mean? The TV behind the meter means the producing, realizing, and using electricity produced by your solar TV panel is cheaper or at least in parity with what you pay to your retail. Uh, People talking about some problem with renewables because they depend on climate. Yet. Solar sunlight is not always available, and wind doesn't blow day and night, and sun actually switches completely overnight. Right? And you cannot do anything about that. So how to deal with that? And of course there are some very good solutions, such as geographical dispersion. We can go with this geographical dispersion. In Australia is a large sufficient rate. Technical diversity is combining in photovoltaic and renewable energy sources various technologies such as wind photovoltaic, solar, solar thermal, ocean, and circuit. What also is important is probably shift loads from night to day. Now we think that energy is cheaper at night time, and because of this concept of uh, uh, base load supply, which is dictated by necessity of large fossil fuel generators to continue to produce power. But the energy is cheaper at night and we should, we should shift low to night time. But just think in the future, when we have more renewable energy and solar electricity will dominate the world, but probably at night time energy could be more expensive because there's no sun and we'll be shifting low to daytime. Uh, also, of course, it should be combined with dispatchable sources such as biomass, or dry rocks, thermochemicals, and mass storage. The next revolution will come from mass storage. It includes pump hydro, which is known technology, it's not difficult, just pump water up, then you have sunlight, and use it, and water will go down when you need it in night time. It's technology known for 100 years. Uh, advanced batteries, it's more household use and local use, and of course, molten salt is a storage for solar thermal processes. So let me come to our candidate, also focused on our region. Of course, we, have, uh, we are very fortunate to live in a state. We are very fortunate, yeah, sorry. We are very fortunate to live in a state uh, where government is deeply concerned about renewable energy and conducts policy. Uh, and we have a vision of having Canberra 90%, at least 90% of Canberra energy sourced from renewables. Uh, we just learned about uh, Royala Farm, 220 megawatts recently opened. Zenfa is opening, uh, building 13 megawatts farm, and uh, one sun, 7 megawatts farm. It's very substantial solar resources 
to be uh, deployed in that region. Typical price, the solar chief mechanism of feeding tariff, and typical price of feeding tariff for solar was about 18 cents per kilowatt hour. That's what government will pay producers of solar energy for their generation. So, and recently we learned about bids close for 200 megawatt wind farm, wind development. Uh, so what, what's very important in this particular bid of 200 megawatts, it's always a discussion, where the synergy is coming, okay, we'll have this so local generation in Canberra, but would be this uh, installation just delivered by helicopter drop in ACT, or dropped in Australia, with no local content, will just become consumers, more consumers, and also consumers of renewable energy. Thanks to the ACT government, they wisely introduced a policy of local content in the 200, 200 uh, megawatt solar option. And local content actually requires that request bidders to show and demonstrate the big uh, the, in the impact, impact of their development in local research and uh, industry development. We are doing new work like lucky. For us, because uh, due to this requirement, we've been approached by most of the company, most of the dealers, and we have very, very interesting joint projects in mind that will be developed with one of the dealers. So, how to make Canberra solar capital of Australia? Analyzing the reasons which prevent us from that, one of the major reasons still remains are not it's clearly not a technical reason, but one of the issue is not in my backyard. It's very, very damaging. When people are saying that we are offended by wind farms in the Lake George, so I'm actually offended by not having wind farms anywhere. Because if you will see wind farms on Lake George, any person with environmental concern should be extremely happy because it means that somewhere else we don't have mining, we don't have polluting fossil fuel generators and then I cannot see any offense. Then we can have we have talks talks about great impact the negative impact of solar photovoltaics. I've heard to one senior person from real estate industry who told me recently, look, don't you understand you're a scientist? The solar photovoltaics they reflect solar light and light is dangerous for our eyes. So we should not have them. That's either uh, it's absolutely has no technical background. For example, any solar photovoltaic will reflect less light than anything else because the purpose of solar photovoltaic is to observe light. Good photovoltaic will not. Work. But in the maximum they will reflect light not many more than in the last window. And finally, it's interesting how this argument is used against solar photovoltaic for whatever reason. Because at the same time, and this real estate person would understand very well, the real estate near the, this ocean view or river view is very expensive. But I can guarantee that ocean reflects much more solar light than any solar farm near you. So why would it affect prices on beachfront, beachfront fields? Uh, also, you can see uh, Social equality is very important in consideration of uh, future of renewable energy. Uh, there are some views that only rich suburbs put solar cells, it's not for poor people, and hardworking Australian families cannot afford it. I cannot see any ground behind that. That's never been proven by any research. But at the same time, one of the research direction at ANU is to develop mechanism and scheme that will uh, allow uh, people with not with re re relatively low income to jump into renewable energy market. As you know, we have tax scheme, as higher education contribution scheme, is that allows everyone to go to university, study at university, and pay you when you generate income. They are so-called income contingent loan. So the architect, the same person who uh, design that scheme, Bruce, Professor Bruce Jackman, is now working at a new and similar scheme for renewable energy. So to provide the contingent loans for renewable energy adoption in household. So what's the next 
big thing in Canada. Uh, industrial solar roofs. You can see many roofs of uh, individual houses covered by solar cells, but industrial solar photovoltaics is still underutilized. And of course, they provide much higher potential because of economy of scale. Local storage. Local storage is critical, and we are working on several projects how to deal on household level with variable uh, renewable energy generation by adjusting demand, local demand, and dealing with local battery storage. Batteries are getting cheaper and cheaper, and you can see now next revolution, coming revolution in storage, which will follow solar revolution, and batteries getting cheaper because of mostly huge investment in development of my mobile phones and electric vehicles. Okay, so I have, so then also what's critical and why renewable energy is critical for Canberra, it's an opportunity for us to capitalize on Canberra's very high intellectual potential. And it's not necessarily on development of core solar technologies, is what we are doing today in here, but also on development of market-based solutions for solar. And in, for example, in the future of Internet of Things, in the future of that energy, and each household will become the thing in the Internet of Things, where everybody can see what was the presumption, what the demand, like you can see what's happening with your mobile phone. Uh, and of course, electric vehicles. So in summary, we are observing a worldwide solar and wind revolution. Australia is on its way to small and smooth transition to 100% renewables by 2040 through natural attrition of uh, power, fossil fuel power stations. And Canberra and ACT is leading. Solar and wind is unlimited. Fossil fuels are an ongoing source of tension as economic as political tension, and we can see it worldwide. So, movement to renewables is inevitable and good, not just because it's been dealing with climate change. Climate can, can or can and should be almost renewable by 2030, and will become solar capital of Australia, and we will be all proud to live in it. Thank you. Thank you very much to Dr. Scraven for uh, his perspective as a researcher in renewable energies, particularly in the solar field, our first speaker today. Our second speaker now is Mr. John Grimes. John was appointed as the Chief Executive of the Australian Solar Council in 2008. He started his career as an officer in the Air Force and went on to found and grow a number of companies, including a start-up company he took to a successful listing on the ASX, with a market capitalisation in excess of $30 million. Now his most recent company was in the environmental sector and it employed over 25 people with operations in Australia, the United States and the Middle East. John has a passion for the solar industry and is regularly called on by the media to provide comment on solar issues. 